Hey everybody, my name is Ian O'Byrne. I'm taking a little bit of time to take a look at three steps to be a digitally agile educator. Uh, this is something I've been working on for a while now. I've done a lot of writing and research to try and figure out possibilities for educators and just average individuals to think about how they can work in a way that's a little bit more uh, agile using digital texts and tools um, and in turn, you know, bring these to students and also, um, you know, colleagues and do it in their own work. Um, so in thinking about this, I think that literacy and technology are changing uh, the ways in which we engage and work with others. Um, they also provide opportunities for us to, you know, guide our students. Um, and in the end, the, the goal should be, at least I think, that we provide opportunities for people to not only be readers, but also writers of the web. So let's take a look at what this all means. Um, before we really get started, like I said, my name is Ian O'Byrne. You can find me online at WI O'Byrne um, and also at WIOBurn.com is my main blog or my website. Um, a lot of the work that I'm starting to do in this capacity is an opportunity to build up uh, some online coursework and guidance uh, and coach individuals as they try to figure out how to use these tools in their own practice. So in terms of this specific webinar what i want to take a look at is uh, start off with what is the current context what is the current situation that we have then i want to move to taking a look at opportunities to first of all consume and then curate and then create online content or digital media and we'll dig much deeper into that and last but not least i want to give an opportunity to discuss and debrief and think about some of the things that i've presented uh, once again this is just the beginning of the discussion i think that I will hopefully, if I've done my job right, I will unearth a, a bunch of opportunities where we can grow and we can learn and we can improve ourselves for the future. So this is the beginning of the discussion. Please reach out for more support and we will have more classes and workshops in the coming months and coming years as we unpack this. Uh, this is by no means uh, the, the start and end of the discussion. So when I talk about being digitally agile, agile really comes from uh, software development and we're thinking about work that is or, or processes that are self-organizing, they are adaptive, they are flexible, and they're iterative. So this is an opportunity to, on the individual level, uh, create and recreate your work processes, use tools, examine tools, reuse tools, uh, get rid of tools. Um, and be able to work adaptively and flexibly across a number of situations using a number of tools. So just put simply, we want to be able to work in a way that's device agnostic and be able to have access to our data and our work it, across multiple spaces, across multiple places. And one of the reasons why we want to be able to do this is, first of all, our world is becoming increasingly digital. So we know that when we go down to buy a cup of coffee, we have trackers and sensors that are watching us on the way in and out. We can now pay for our, you know, our coffee with our cell phone. Uh, we have the opportunity to shop and communicate and research all with these devices. And we see this, this digital network that's following us, uh, not only when we're sitting in our, at our desk at our computer, but then also it's following us around throughout our lives. With this, we know that there are tremendous privacy and security concerns as we engage with these digital texts. Uh, these privacy and security concerns uh, seem to be ever more present right now, and this is something that's not going to go away. This is something that we will have to uh, deal with and, and be concerned about in the remain, you know, as we engage with these tools. And this uh, does not see this does not basically give a call that we should be afraid of these situations or these circumstances we just have to be aware of them and we have to take the time to educate ourselves about privacy and security and how we can make sure that we are protected as we engage and work online I also believe that there's a fundamental balance between good and evil I think with a lot of these digital tools and digital spaces, there's opportunities for us to do incredible things. We can reach out uh, to others across the globe and educate ourselves. Uh, there are opportunities to empower ourselves and empower others. There is uh, the opportunity to use digital tools to enact change. But at the same time, we have to recognize the fact that there 
there's a lot of evil or a lot of bad things that can occur from the use of these digital tools. We know that there's uh, trolls that are out there online. We know, as we said in the, in the last slide, there are privacy and security concerns. So we have to recognize that there, there is good and evil that can come from the use of these tools. And most of this requires that we remain aware and cognizant of the opportunity and the power involved in the use of these tools. So as we talk about these things, we're presented with a tremendous opportunity to do great things with these tools and do great things to empower ourselves and create new lives for ourselves or for other people. Um, but there's not a lot of guidance in terms of how we use these tools and how do we adjust to the use of these tools in our own lives. To make some sense of this, one of the, the models that I've been working on over the last couple of years is this idea that there is this continuum, this potential continuum between consuming and curating and creating. Uh, and that's what I want to spend most of my time talking about tonight is the idea that, you know, we can, uh, you know, be consumers, but also curators and then potentially cr creators of digital content or of online content. And I want to paint this picture of this continuum that exists and nudge many of us from one to the second stage to the to the final stage. So we talk about consumption. Uh, the good news is this is something that we already do and we do well. If we look at a lot of the research online, we know that the internet is the dominant text for our generation. We use the internet to research. We use it to read, write, participate, socialize. We use it to connect with other individuals online. A lot of the uh, research shows that we consume digital media and online information at uh, an astonishing rate and it's just becoming more and more uh, a regular text of our daily interactions we see digital text as a ubiquitous uh, informational source that goes across our society so there are different ways that we connect there are different ways that we uh, you know read write and socialize and participate with others but then also at the same time as we consume this information we should have concerns or questions about how well we critically examine this information, how well we interact and try to make sense of it and question or problematize the information. So not only are we using the internet as the dominant text uh, for information, personal information seeking behaviors and also health seeking behaviors, but we have to think about how we critically examine, examine this information um, and how we basically take everything with a grain of salt as we read online. Um, and this has become increasingly problematic uh, in a global sense as we look at not only uh, personal or academic information seeking behaviors, but also health information, uh, the ways in which this impacts our, our elections and our political processes. So in terms of becoming digitally agile, and once again, this is something that, um, you know, I think that we, for the most part, do already individually, um, but I think it's something that we could do a much better job of. And in terms of focusing on becoming digitally agile, I think there's an opportunity to improve upon this. So we already do it, but I think it's at a superficial uh, level And I think in terms of becoming digitally agile, uh, one of the things that we can do is we can read multiple sources across multiple sites. So as we search online, we can look for multiple points of view as we try to come across what is truth. We also have the opportunity to bookmark and archive those digital breadcrumbs that we leave behind as we read and research online. So there's an opportunity to read online and, and document our thinking online and and save those digital breadcrumbs as we move across the internet. Last but not least, the thing that I've been excited about recently is the opportunity to create an annotated layer of the web. And what I mean by that is I can mark up and annotate and highlight informational sources as I read online, and I can save those informational sources for other individuals to, to review. Uh, the tool that I currently use is Hypothesis. I have blog posts uh, out there, you know, on my website showing you how to use Hypothesis. Um, so that's really got me excited lately. The opportunities for, you know, collaboratively individuals to build an annotated layer on the internet. The next step of this continuum I see as being curation. And curation I view as being review uh, and evaluation of sources by a more knowledgeable other. 
so we have to face the fact that many of us share an inordinate amount of information online, whether it's from tablets or devices or our own web browsers. Um, we have individuals, we have groups, we have corporations that share a ton of information online. And the problem with this is this ultimately creates a fire hose of information. So if you are a member of Twitter and you look at the Twitter stream uh, without pulling out individual people that you follow or without pulling out uh, hashtags or groups that you follow, uh, the, the Twitter fire hose of information can be overwhelming for many people. So in this, there is an opportunity for individuals to go and show their expertise. I think there is a need for online content curation. There's a need for people to take the opportunity to sit down and show their expertise and look at the fire hose of information that's available online and say, you know what? I'm an expert in fine Italian handbags, or I'm an expert in CrossFit activities, or I'm an expert in tattoos, or I'm an expert in um, you know educational uses of technology, and and there's a need for individuals to look at the information that's being presented online and say, okay, this over here, this is the good stuff. You know, my role as a curator of online content is to point out the good stuff for you to take a look at. And this stuff over here on the left side or the stuff I ignore or the stuff I don't retweet or share, that's not really worth paying attention to. Uh, so there is a need to be a curator of online content uh, and act as a more knowledgeable other. One way that I try to make that happen in my own work, in my own processes, is I put together my weekly newsletter. In my weekly newsletter, I take uh, a moment to sit down and reflect and synthesize the events of the week. I synthesize and I share uh, my own work and my own thoughts about what's happening in the world. Um, and I have uh, a couple posts out there about my process. But uh, at the base level, what I try to do is take an opportunity to think about what is happening in education and technology and literacy that's really important. And let me take a minute to share that with, under, with other individuals so that they can get a better understanding and a better sense of what's important out there. Um, so that is not only an opportunity for me to archive and share my thinking over time, but I think that it's a service for other individuals. So that works for me. Um, and my question is, what works for you? So in terms of becoming digitally agile, I have questions about what are the ways in which you can be the expert and you can curate uh, information online. One of the ways I think is that we should we should all blog and we should have a website and create and share and archive our, our thinking over time. So I mean, start up a website and start blogging, start reflecting online, uh, whatever it is that you're trying to learn or do in your own uh, situation in in your job. Uh, blog about this, reflect about it. And as you do this, one of the things that you're doing is you're, you're creating and you're curating your online brand or your digital identity. So start openly reflecting online, synthesizing and curating content and sharing it with others so that they can understand what the real important things are um, and the things that they need to pay attention to. And once again, it can we're all experts in a specific area, in a specific field. This is an opportunity for you to think about what you have expertise in and share that with the world and make sense of that fire hose that exists online. One of the last areas that I'm excited about is the opportunity to create. And this is something that when I was teaching got me excited. It's the opportunity to be creative, the opportunity to share and build um, and, and in, in many senses to write. And so in terms of creation, through the use of digital text and tools, there are incredible ways to create digital content that's not only uh, online, but then also exists in hybrid spaces. So we have these new tools through mobile devices and through new apps that we can do incredible things um, that we couldn't even imagine even a couple of years ago. So one of the things that I think is a non-negotiable uh, is that I think that every single one of us, especially in education, should have an ex have expertise in creating and using screen captures and screen casts. So screen capture is an opportunity to take an image 
you know, create an image from something that's on your screen and mark up or annotate that and use that to display or teach or instruct or tell a story from something that exists on your computer screen. A screencast is a movie that you take from what's happening on your screen. So a screencast, in effect, is exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm recording this webinar as an opportunity to share with other people. Um, so a screen capture is a, is a still image that we create from something happening on our screen. On our screen, and a screencast is a video that we create from uh, what we see. It's an opportunity to show the video and also uh, narrate or talk through it if needed. There's also opportunities in, in thinking about creating content. There's opportunities to think about coding and programming. We hear a lot of talk about coding and programming. There are new apps and tools and spaces online where we can learn to code and program. Uh, there are, it, it, it's, it's made very simple. Um, there are also opportunities to join local coding clubs and coding schools and programming schools to either learn or build a skill set. But then there's also the opportunity to think about, you know, we don't need everyone to be coders and or programmers, but I think the important thing is to understand that behind the, the apps or the websites or the programs, there is code that is making those things operate. And I think that we all need to understand and be able to take a look at that code and make sense of it. Um, and so, I mean, there is an opportunity to think about coding and program, programming, but also computational thinking and thinking algorithmically to make sense of the world. So I, I think when we think about creation, we have incredible opportunities to code and program. We have opportunities to, as I said before, go online to spaces like code.org, or we can go and play with Minecraft and, you know, we can uh, create uh, digital sprites or find opportunities to create characters that move around and make programs that operate the way that we want to. Uh, and this is a way to mess around with some code and mess around with digital content and create new things and create new worlds. One of the last spaces that I've increasingly been uh, spending a lot of time and getting excited about is in making. Um, this could be something as simple as uh, cooking in, in our kitchen, but it can also include uh, making with Raspberry Pis and Arduino boards, making with uh, LEDs and watch batteries and copper tape. Uh, this can include sewing. This can include uh, welding. Uh, but there's an opportunity to play with and, and create content both in the real world and in the digital world. And we see maker spaces building up steam. But there's incredible things that we can do when we think about opportunities to make. Um, and, and I view making as, as writ broadly. It can be the real world spaces, but also digital spaces. So we see opportunities. You know, I, I recently spent time in a kindergarten classroom with LEDs, uh, you know, little light up, uh, light up pieces that I would use copper tape and watch batteries. And students would write poems and embed the LEDs and light up the poem into the paper and then we bring that and create movies from that so there we're mixing uh, a number of spaces and a number of tools as we make create and share content so when we think about becoming digitally agile there are opportunities too and i think that we should increasingly create we should create and share materials online so as i said before i think that every single one of us should be creating and sharing images video audio content this can take a number of formats um, one of the things that has me very excited uh, lately and one of the things i've been experimenting with is the uh, creation of instructional gifs or gifs depending on what side of the street you grew up on but i i've been playing with animated instructional gifs so how can i create these uh, basic animations as a way to teach, as a way to show little movements on a screen. And last but not least, I think that as you engage in these activities, as you create, part of the learning process is the, the taking the time to reflect. So please blog and reflect and share uh, what you're creating on your website so that other people that want to follow in the learning after you, they can see what you've learned over time and they can figure out um, things that you did that worked and did not work or things that you did that made you successful and they can follow in your path.
So once again, we're taking a look at this continuum that exists, or I believe it exists, between consumption to curation to creation. For the most part, we create. Uh, for the most part, we consume. Excuse me. We consume digital content uh, at a vast amount, and and I think that there is an opportunity. This is great, and we should continue to do that. And it it. It is a trend that is is increasing in popularity uh, and uh, is ubiquitous across the globe at this point. Uh, but at the same time, we have to think about how we critically examine, how we problematize, and how we synthesize this information. So for the most part, we are consuming digital content already. I think the next step is we have to think about how do we uh, act as curators of the web? How do we act as curators of digital content uh, and making sense of this information and synthesizing it and evaluating it for others. So we sort of make sense of that fire hose. The last thing I really want to push us uh, into doing is being creators of digital media. So not only readers, but writers of digital content. And I think that this is something that we do not do enough of, but there are opportunities and the tools are becoming ever more ubiquitous and even easier to use. So there's real opportunities for us to create digital things um, in incredible ways. So once again, um, this is the beginning of the discussion. My name is Ian O'Byrne. You can reach out to me on Twitter. You can email me for more information. Uh, the newsletter that I talked about in there, uh, you can subscribe if you have not already. The newsletter is available uh, at wioburn.com slash TLDR. So you can subscribe there uh, and follow along. And I'll, I'll continue to share new webinars and new information uh, as we proceed at you know within the newsletter so once again thank you for the opportunity looking forward to learning and sharing uh, and working with you in the future